You do not want to mess with James Harden. If you refuse to trade him, he'll potentially put on a fat suit and party in Vegas to make things uncomfortable. Or in Brooklyn, he'll literally stop playing in the middle of your games. Now, dude demands a trade and Philly says no deal. They have ended trade talks with the Clippers. Too bad, Harden. So he comes out and says this. Zero Mori is a liar and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of me. That is harsh. And from another angle, did he get his fat suit back out of the closet? But how is the GM Daryl Morey a liar? Harden says last year he took less money with the promise of a max contract this offseason. That is against NBA rules, but happens all the time. But Morey went back on his word, so Harden is burning down the team. But something is different than all his other trade demands in the past. James Harden is about to ruin the NBA for other NBA players. He demanded out after opting into his $35.6 million contract, wanting the Clippers. But rumors say LA refused to include Terrence Mann in the trade, so Philly GM Daryl Morey said no deal. Now, reports say Harden has no plans to show up for work as a Sixer. The first comment you'll hear is, so why did he opt in? Don't wanna play for Philly? No problem, don't opt into your contract. But that was the only way that he could get to the Clippers. Every contender doesn't have cap space, so unless Harden was gonna take the minimum, he had to opt in so they could trade for it. Now, I'm not saying that is right, I'm just explaining his mindset. But the problem is Harden has no leverage. If he wants big money next year, he's gotta ball out, not sit out, so Philly is gonna call his bluff. Also, no one wants him that bad. He thought the Clippers were gonna be desperate to get a guy who can't perform under pressure. Yeah, he had good games in the playoffs, but once again, in the biggest spot, he collapsed. Game seven against the Celtics, he was three for 11 with nine points. No one would be excited if James Harden came to their team. He is the only person who doesn't see that. Now, Harden is about to ruin the NBA for everyone else. Players worked for years to get max contracts and demand trades. It was called player empowerment. People loved it. Fans and media root for players to get what they want, but no one wants Harden to get his wish. They are sick of him getting paid millions and then acting like a child when he doesn't get his way. It is the third time he's done that. Now, Adam Silver must come out and make a statement against Harden. It is a horrible look for the league when a player can opt into his contract, then refuse to play for the team he said he'd play for. The commissioner needs to say they will use every rule to punish James Harden. The first rule is not getting paid. Two years ago when Ben Simmons did this, Philly withheld his game checks, which amounted to about half his salary. Then Simmons' agent sued the team and they had to give back some of that money, but Silver should revoke every dime. The second thing is an old rule that has never been used. The NBA says, a player who withholds playing services for more than 30 days after the start of the last season covered by his contract shall not be a veteran free agent and shall not be entitled to negotiate or sign a contract with any other pro basketball team until the team for which the player last played expressly agrees otherwise. Basically, if he holds out, he ain't a free agent. The Sixers can refuse to let him sign with any other team. It has never been done because that would be savage. In the era of player empowerment, that would be insane. But now, people would love to see that used against James Harden. Harden thinks he is a max level superstar who can just demand a trade whenever he wants. That was years ago. Now, teams will feel entitled to fight back against these players. We're already seeing it with Damian Lillard this offseason. He's like the kid in class who doesn't even try to hide his phone. Then the teacher sees it and takes everyone's phone away. You ruined it for everyone else. Things are changing as they should. The NBA is the only workplace where contracts are meaningless. If Damian Lillard wants to be elsewhere, why did he sign his max extension last year? Same with Kevin Durant in Brooklyn. Nobody's forcing these guys to sign, 
but the new trend is sign now, ask out later. The least they can do is honor their agreement. And I'm not saying player movement is bad for the NBA. We all love trades and free agency. It's fun, but it's the dirty game some guys play that leaves a bad taste in your mouth. The worst example is James Harden, who has more trade demands than anyone, but he is not the only person to blame. I like Daryl Morey, but what are you doing? Is Terrence Mann gonna change your world? The full deal Philly wanted was Terrence Mann, Norman Powell, and two first round picks. How bad would it be to just get Norm Powell and picks? Terrence Mann is worth all this drama? You think Joel Embiid wants to do the whole Ben Simmons holdout thing again? Dude's already hinting at a trade demand. At this point, it's a matter of time before the MVP is out of Philly. Either they trade Harden for trash, or Harden causes drama. Either way, it ends badly. But what about the Clippers? Why not trade Terrence Mann to get James Harden? I know he's been horrible in the playoffs, but as a number three, the best chances Harden has ever had was in OKC and in Brooklyn. Both times, he was the third best player. In OKC, he came off the bench with KD and Russ and made the finals. As a net, he would have won a chip if everyone stayed healthy. That's not hating on the Bucks in 2021. Harden hurt his hamstring, Kyrie sprained his ankle, and it still went to a game seven. So Harden as a number three is actually a recipe for success and they won't trade Terrence Mann. But I have to say, James Harden's legacy is trashed. That's why I was shocked to hear a former NBA player, Jeff Teague, say this. I got him over D-Wade, but I'm out of pocket. Like D-Wade, he had Shaq, then he had Bron. He ain't never really been by himself. When Miami was by himself, they was trash. Yeah. Prom, James Harden. He yeah. averaged 35 for like five straight years. Like, And how many assists? And like tennis, bro, he, nah, he, he better than D-Wade, bro. I'm sorry, bro. What? I don't care that Harden puts up numbers. They dry up in the biggest games. Great players are defined in the playoffs. When young D-Wade was paired with Shaq, he was the best player in the NBA Finals to win a chip. Then when he gets LeBron, he gives the keys to his own franchise to the better player. That is a level of humility we almost never see in pro sports outside of like when Steph Curry gave the team to Kevin Durant. But Harden has beefed with his best teammates from Dwight Howard to Chris Paul to Russ to Kyrie. Now, he and Jeff Teague still think that he's a top player in the NBA who can just demand a trade. It's about to kill player empowerment and no one is happy. But the most fun storyline next year is Rookie of the Year. Wimby versus Scoot versus Chet Holmgren. I looked at who will win the award and why it won't be Wimbanyama. 